and welcome to the third episode of Let's Hear How This Sounds. This is the show where I start off with some random selections of instruments and effects that I then use to create song demos in Ableton. So let's get started. As always, we kick off on this randomizer with this little push me button. Um, I wish I could maybe like pretend like I'm pushing something. Actually, get over here. Get down a little. I'm, I'm like looking off. Flip horizontal. Oh, look. Ah, my Everything I'm doing is backwards. Okay, cool. So as you can see, every time I click this button that says push me, it will change these random options. Let's say I'll push this push me button three times. One, two, three. We will have a BPM of 130. First instrument being a kalimba. Uh, second instrument being a tone generator. And then I've got two new options here. Uh, field recording, which I'm not set to use just yet. And then wild card tuning fork. So the wild card are just like random things I've got around in, in the studio. Now we go to Ableton. I've got a fresh Ableton session here starting from scratch except for my VO track is here. I'm going to go and change the BPM from the standard 120 to 130. I'm going to click Apple or Command T to make a new track and call this Kalimba. Starting this episode I've got this little uh, sidebar cheat sheet for me so I don't have to keep flipping back to the view of the randomizer. So let's pull a chorus ensemble and up to pan. Kalimba. Uh, it's this little thumb thing. Dunk, 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 dunk. I just had to make sure that I was calling it the right thing. Yes, kalimba. Let me go get my kalimba. Well, <laughs> bad news is I can't find my kalimba. Um... <laughs> Look at one more spot. If somebody has my kalimba, please return it to me immediately. I need it for a video. Good news is I've got a lot of other stuff to use. Maybe I re-randomize. I think that's the only choice. Okay, back to the drawing board. One, two, three. Acoustic guitar, got it. Clarinet, got it. We've got a delay on the acoustic, a filter delay, hybrid reverb on the clarinet, and a shifter. Wild card, bring tuning fork again. All right, let's hear how this sounds. Let's hear how this sounds. Okay, back in Ableton again. Let's change the BPM here to 105. Let's go to this Kalimba and Apple R it. Call it Acoustic Gwit. Let's delete these two plugins and insert a delay and filter delay. And there we go. Now, one thing that I don't want is to hear while we record. So I'm actually gonna drop in a MIDI track here. And uh, I've started putting these little drum starter MIDI drum beats together uh, to kind of replace what the metronome does. So these are just little MIDI loops that are attached to a very simple drum rack where I dropped in a bunch of the standard Ableton um, drum hits. So I've got a few different kicks a few different snares, some digital snares, and then some uh, cymbals. And this is, again, uh, a good way to replace the metronome. I've only got one very simple beat in here so far. I'm gonna make a new one real quick. I've got my MIDI controller. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna be triggering the kick here. Shut up, metronome. I'm gonna call this Simple Drum Starter 02 and drag this guy into my little Simple Drum Starter. So now uh, if I wanna get him back, I'll just drag him on in here. Cool. So now I've got this instead of a metronome. I've got an acoustic. I think I'm just gonna play some open chords. Make sure I'm in tune here. gonna duplicate this um, this little drum loop a number of times so I got it selected I'm gonna hit command D D D D D record
that's a good little repeating pattern to play with. A little repeating pattern. How's that for plosive control? Repeating pattern to play with, and you can't even hear a single puff on the microphone. I'm I'm sending a bit of acoustic guitar over to just the stock reverb that was put in here by default. Uh, shame on me for using that that default. With this delay, instead of putting a heavy delay, I'm going to turn this into our friend the Haas effect. I'm gonna uh, turn these from sync to time. I'm gonna turn the left all the way down to as far down as it goes. Right, we can change to taste. Uh, feedback all the way down. Um, also with right, I'm gonna just turn it up to 33%. Um, for no other reason than I'm just experimenting. Turn the filter off here. Um, dry wet all the way wet. And now you can hear that it's really sp spread that signal apart. What's filter delay gonna do? You could either throw a delay on the left channel, the right channel. Um, you've got your pan controls here. Your volume control for each channel down down this column, the amount of feedback or, um, yeah, the amount of feedback per channel. So this sucker is just going to keep going. And they all have their own filters too. So this filter is on, it's rolling off those low ends and only giving us high end feed, um, high end delay here. Higher the number, the slower the delay time. Shout out metronome. I am going, before we go any further, to put an EQ8 before the delays to roll off these low ends from this acoustic. I'm just gonna duplicate this track because I wanna consider um, adding another little bit of something. Should I do with that little part? Boom, boom. I'm gonna put one more, maybe a higher register. I'm gonna group these three acoustic guitars. Makes it easier to kind of close it up. And um, before moving on to the clarinet, as, as seen in the list here, I'm going to put a bass in here. Bass. these together I'll be right back I just ate dinner where are we going next we are going to the clarinet apple tea that guy call him clarinet I'm thinking in my mind I think I'm gonna make a bunch of tracks that are just uh, single notes that all peak in this little bridge part here <laughs> For the sake of recording this, I'm gonna I'm gonna triplicate and quadruplicate just this little section. Quadrupled. Where's the best mic placement for a clarinet? According to Google, aim the mic at the fingering hole. <laughs>
do you find an E on this thing? at the end this part repeated like 10 times or so and then just these kind of nonsense things built up and up and up so let's group these little bits that i just recorded apple g these are gentle clarinets take them down what if at the end crazy nets come in let's color code these did you know if you have a signed uh, track, a color, and then you've got a bunch of different colored clips within that track, you don't have to select the clips and then assign the color to the clips. You can select a track, right click, and then say um, assign track color to clips. I didn't know that one for, for a while. Can you play exactly what you played on that last track? Yeah, sure. Now that's jazz. Just kidding, I like jazz. All right, so back up into the gentle clarinet group. I'm gonna apply a hybrid reverb to the group and then look into a shifter, probably for the craziness. So let's get that hybrid. I'm not gonna do a lot of processing, just a teeny tiny smattering. Um, gonna turn this into a shelf, I believe is what these are called. Whoops, that shelf is facing the wrong way. Shelf, face this way, thank you. That's um, a bit extreme of a EQ shift there, but hey, you know what? I'm gonna put one more EQ8 after this to find where the most offensive frequencies are. It's not... I mean, those are kind of piled up, but you don't want to kill your fundamentals here. I'm gonna turn my little headphone on here. That, okay, I'm gonna take that down a bit. Look, man, we are doing some quick and dirty work here. Nothing surgical. This is like doing surgery with a baseball bat. You want to hear what these suckers sound like soloed? Let's turn it down, huh? That's, that's not crazy enough. You know what they need? Auto pan, please. Let's just make these guys go back and forth. So I'm going to copy this auto pan, paste it into this next guy, but kind of change the phase up. The rate will be different. Next, we'll slow you down. We make you a randomized. Next, put it faster on this guy. Next. What have we done? We haven't used the shifter yet on the clarinet. Okay, this is where things get even crazier. I'm gonna put on each one individually. Perfect. Now that we've had some crazy fun, let's mute this sucker. A tuning fork, ooh. Switch over to my cheesy webcam here, this guy. Got this handful of tuning forks. But I'm gonna record them in a kind of interesting way. 
on my wall. I've got some of the projects and, and stuff I've built over the years. This is sort of like a, a little mini version of an apprehension engine. Some, just a, a piece of a lamp, some old clock work pieces, bungee cords, prongs. But inside of this, there are some contact microphones that go out of this little XLR. I'm going to use the piezo mic that's inside of this um, to pick up the sound of a tuning fork. I'm going to put a reverb on this tuning track. I'm going to turn the VO mic off so you don't hear the room sound. You'll just hear the sound of the, the direct mic here. going to tune that in a second, but let me try some of the other forks here. That's eerie, right? It makes me think of a Star Trek sound. Sixteen. 16. Uh, so let's, let's raise it up 16 more. I think I'm going to edit out the big old knock, like take the knock down and just let it fade in. All right, so I am going to do the same sort of tuning and editing for each of the others. You click on this little barbell looking dealio you can uh, work on automation for different uh, parameters in the clip so let's go to clip parameters and transposition I want it to go from a higher note to this I want it to resolve here so let's see in order for it to bend like that, we need to change its setting from beats to complex or complex pro. That's haunting, right? I'm going to do that here with this guy too. Um, change it from beats to complex. Mm. I don't even think I need this third tuning fork. I'm going to delete you. Uh, let's, let's put something more organic in for percussion. I think snaps, just like sn snaps. And group these guys, call it the snaps. Instead of a digital hi-hat, let's record um, a regular hi-hat. All right, that gives me something to work with there. Let's do one more tr Apple T uh, tambo, you know. bit of that tack off so this is about where in a track that I feel like I want to record some vocals um, and typically during the vocal recording process is also when I start rearranging the, the parts so I am gonna do that now yeah buddy you're coming down baby you're coming down isn't so hard to see but never going down it's a sad sounding song but the message is a uh, positive it isn't so hard to tell 
It isn't so hard to see But we're never going, we're never going down It would be funny if it ended with that one little so this is a lot more involved than I typically want these sessions to go, but such is the creative process, right? I feel like there needs to be something in that little section right here. So this tracking session is is going and going and this is typically what happens during a creative process is your your creative juices keep flowing you want to keep adding subtracting and adding but because i don't want these episodes to go and go and go i'm going to stop this here i'm going to go through i'm going to add some processing on these tracks maybe i'll i'll squish and squanch some of these bits and pieces together and call it a demo so here's what it sounds like
Thanks for sticking around this far. If uh, you like this episode, consider subscribing. I'm going to try to put out at least three of these a month, and uh, I hope to see you on each and every single one of those. Right on. Take care. Bye.